guys, welcome back. I got Hurley here. It's Kevin here from Candy Banana Balls. And Hurley is our pastel banana. Today what we want to talk about is um, the unique things about the banana gene. The banana gene is unlike any other gene with the sex link. Um, what sex link means is uh, the banana gene rides on the same chromosome as what determines the sex of the animal. So uh, typical uh, bananas are male makers, that's the most common, which means the male chromosome and the banana gene both are in the same exact spot. So whenever this guy is produced, when he mates, he has a 50% chance of being a banana, but that is going to be almost a 100% chance of being a male, pretty much 99%. So it's a very unique thing that the banana gene. Um, what we want to talk about today is trying to understand it, and it can get a little complicated. Um, I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible for you guys, and uh, bear with me. Um, it does get a little bit complicated, but uh, I have a few visual aids that maybe we can make this uh, go a little smoother. So hang tight. Okay, so to help us understand this a little better, I uh, drew a few things out and I have these to represent DNA strands. So let's start out with what basically a normal male and female ball python mating would look like. So basically over here you have the, the two strands of DNA for the female ball python X chromosome. And then you have the male Y chromosome and the X chromosome of the male end of the ball python. So if you take and this part matches up with this part, you would end up with one female normal ball python. You also take that same part and match it up with the other DNA strand. You end up with another female normal ball python. When you take the Y chromosome and match it up, Males always determine the sex of the ball python, same with humans. So when this happens, you're taking that male is going to make that a male normal ball python. Same thing happens when you pair it up with the other strand of DNA. You end up with another male normal ball python. So you see basically 50% of the time, same thing with uh, humans, 50% of the time you have boys, 50% of the time you have girls. So what is unique about the banana gene is, let's just say a pastel gene, something like that. It could be anywhere on these DNA strands. But with the banana gene, it rides in the exact same spot as what determines sex, the same chromosome. So let's just say you're in a uh, roller coaster car. This is going to sit in the same car is what determines sex, boy or girl, of the ball python. Now, in bananas, you're going to see that most are going to be male makers. You're going to find out in the world, you know, 70-80% of what's available for you to buy um, is going to be male ball python, male bananas. So, I'm going to show you why that is and what can happen that can make you have a female maker. So, let's go up to the top chart and take our strands again. So, we have our two strands, our female and our male. Now, like I said before, most of the time you're going to be working with a, a male maker. So, we're going to go ahead and attach this banana to the same spot that determines sex of the male. And we're going to be working with a normal female with a male maker banana. So, whenever you take that side of the male's DNA strand and match it up with a female, you're going to end up with a female normal. Same thing, when you take that side and match up the other side, you're going to end up with a female normal. Okay? Here's where it gets interesting. Here comes the male side, but guess what's attached? The banana gene. So now the banana hitches a ride on the roller coaster over here with the female, and because male determines the sex, now you have a male banana. Same thing. That banana is going to hitch a ride over here 
and land. And now we're going to have another male banana. So that's what's interesting about the banana gene. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Once out of every 100, roughly, or a 1% chance, you could have what they call as a crossover event. So now you have a banana, and that gene, instead of riding here on the male part or the Y chromosome, it's over here on the X. So it's attached to the female. So even though you're going back and forth, now you end up with a female banana. Now it doesn't stop there. That's the only part of it. Now we take that female banana and we go up here. We have our female banana and our male normal. So we have our female banana and male normal. And what we produce is female normal, female banana, male normal, male banana. Now, the male banana, because it's going to look like this, the male banana and its DNA strand is going to have the male side over here, but now the banana is going to be riding on the female strand of DNA, or on the X chromosome. Now, what you have here is a male that determines the sex, and that sex is now going to be producing female bananas. And that's where banana is so interesting. When you get one of those, um, you have something. I mean, female bananas are rare as it is. To have a male that produces all female bananas, uh, that's where you have something. Now you can produce those female bananas. And, and typically, if you watch Morph Market, things like that, those female bananas are easily double the price of a male, if not more. And it all depends on what other genes are coming along for the ride, pastel, anything like that. But just to have a male banana that produces females adds value to that male now. So where you see male bananas sometimes starting 200, 250 for a baby male banana. Um, if that male banana is now a female maker, um, that could easily change to four or five hundred dollars um, because there's just not a lot of them out there. Like I said, one out of a hundred times it happens. So it's a rare thing. So when you have one, um, you have something of a little bit more value. And obviously female bananas are uh, a lot more valuable than a male banana because they're so much more rare. So I hope that helps you guys understand a little bit more about bananas and what's so interesting about them. Um, there's something else. And it's really the only sex-linked gene that I'm aware of um, in the ball python. So um, it's very unique. Um, banana is the only one that acts like this and and has this trait so um it's very interesting to be a part of and uh, you can see where it can get interesting and obviously banana does have a super version so when you go to a super banana now you're back basically to square one where you would have a normal that super banana male should typically produce half and half females and males just like a normal one would now pair that up with another banana and now you start to see different things super bananas are being made bananas so it's 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 something else uh, banana is, is a very interesting uh, co-dominant gene so I'm glad you went along for the ride I hope you understand a little better it can be very confusing um, I watched several videos to understand it and still feel that you know, I, I, I maybe don't understand it 100%, but I'm getting a little bit better at it. If you guys really want to watch somebody that can explain this stuff way better than me, um, that has the experience, that knows uh, way more about uh, this type of stuff, is Royal Balls, Rob Bearcloth. Um, he does a lot of genetic stuff on, on different things, and he does have a nice video out just about bananas. So if you want to learn about that, um, definitely check out his video. Um, it's way better than mine, and it, it makes probably a lot more sense. I'm just trying to, to help you guys understand what we're doing here when we're working with this banana gene, uh, some of the interesting things that we're going to come across. So thanks for tuning in. Again, please like and subscribe. It would be excellent for you guys to come along this journey with us. We really are just getting started. We're just pairing up. Um, we, I did have a lock with the banana pastel and the firefly. 
Um, that's exciting news. Um, see where that goes. We just got that big 4,000 gram plus female in, female normal. So that's exciting news. And things are just going to keep moving forward. Um, hopefully we have a lot of good luck. But whatever we don't, I'll share with you. And we can understand and work together. When we make a mistake, we'll learn from it. And we'll hopefully do better the next time. So please like, subscribe, come along this journey. And uh, we'll see you then. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope we learn something together. Thank you.